Where's Helm? Quiet, please. Quiet. Please find your seats. Quiet, please. Find your seats. Please remain seated and come to order. Department 24 is back in session. Thank you. We're back. Joseph D'Angelo. It's case 18 FB 008017. Thank you, Your Honor. To incident 37. On October 18th, 1976, Jane Doe was in her house on Kipling Drive in the city of Carmichael, County of Sacramento with her two children. In preparation for a move to the Bay Area, the house had recently been listed for sale and the sign was still out front. Jane Doe, number 22's husband, had already started a new, a new job in the Bay Area. In the early morning hours, she was awakened by her son who told her someone was trying to get into the house through a kitchen window. She picked up the phone and tried to dial the operator, but the phone just rang. She could hear someone running down the hallway towards the bedroom the door opened and a masked male with no pants grabbed the phone from her, jumped on the bed and put a knife to her throat. He told her to do exactly what she wanted. He would kill her. The man with the knife making the threats was Joseph D'Angelo. After asking who else was in the residence, D'Angelo bound Jane Doe 22's hands and her son's hands behind their backs. He then blindfolded them with torn pieces of towel and bound their ankles. D'Angelo tied her son to the headboard and before leaving the room with his mother said, don't make a noise. Every time you move a muscle, it will take seconds off of your mother's life. D'Angelo demanded money and Jane Doe 22 told him there was money in her purse and an envelope with $250 that was a donation for the cancer fund. He took all of it. Jane Doe 22 was forced to the ground on her back D'Angelo covered her face with a towel, stuffed a rag in her mouth, and untied her feet, removed her underwear, and vaginally raped her. He then rolled her over and forced her to masturbate him while her hands were tied behind her back. D'Angelo then forced her to orally copulate him and raped and sodomized her several more times. In between the rapes, he would wander around the house, eat food, open drawers, only to return and rape her again. She heard D'Angelo go into the garage and after several minutes, he was able to untie her bindings and go to a neighbor's house for help. Before leaving, D'Angelo took four rings off of Jane Doe number 37's fingers, including her wedding ring and band. Thank you. Uh, Council, you wish to be heard as to incident number 37. Regarding the uncharged offense of rape of Jane Doe number 22 having occurred on October 18th, 1976, in the county of Sacramento, a violation of Penal Code Section 261. Do you admit or deny that? Regarding the uncharged offense of false imprisonment of Jane Doe, number 22, on October 18th, 1976, in the county of Sacramento, violation of Penal Code Section 236. Do you admit or deny that? Regarding the uncharged offense of making a criminal threat, to Jane Doe, number 22, having occurred on October 18th, 1976, in the County of Sacramento. Violation of Penal Code Section 422. Do you admit or deny that? Council? In regard to <clears throat> Incident 38, on November 10th, 1976, Jane Doe, 23, who was a teenager at the time, was home alone watching television. Her parents had gone out for the evening. She was in the family room in their home on Greenleaf Drive in the city of Citrus Heights, County of Sacramento. At 7.30 p.m., she heard a loud noise and her dog, who was sitting on her lap, began to shake and bark. Moments later, a man entered the family room and grabbed her, he told her to shut up or he would kill her. Her dog began to bark and the man kicked it viciously. The intruder was Joseph D'Angelo. He was wearing a leather-like welder's hood 
and told her he only wanted money, but then proceeded to tie her hands behind her back with black shoestrings. D'Angelo then forced her outside into the backyard. Once outside, he bound her ankles with shoelaces and demanded money. She told him she didn't have any. The victim saw D'Angelo had a bike with him and there were numerous shoelaces that were draped over the handlebars of the bike. D'Angelo returned to the house, turned off the television, put the screen back on the window and locked the rear door to the home. He then untied the bindings on her ankles and forced her to a nearby drainage ditch, which ran along the back of the property. After walking a quarter of a mile in the ditch, D'Angelo forced her down on the bank and retied her ankles. He started ripping and cutting her jeans and removed them. He started moving his hands up and down her thighs and asking her questions about where she went to school. Jane Doe, 23, initially reported that she was forced to walk further away from her home, told to sit down and not move for 20 minutes. She said that D'Angelo had then walked off, leaving her just sitting on the edge of the drainage bank. She was able to untie her wrists and ankles and walk back towards the home. When she reached a neighbor's house, she called for help. After Joseph D'Angelo was arrested, Sacramento County Sheriff's Detective Sergeant Michelle Hendricks was asked to re-interview Jane Doe number 23 to confirm her original statements to law enforcement from 1976. During the 2018 interview, Jane Doe 23 admitted that she had been vaginally raped on the bank of the drainage ditch by D'Angelo. At the time of the event, she was young and too embarrassed and ashamed to talk about it. Thank you, counsel. You wish to be heard as to incident number 38? No, Your Honor. Regarding the uncharged offense of kidnapping Jane Doe, number 23, having occurred on November 10th, 1976, in the County of Sacramento, violation penal code section 207, do you admit or deny that? I admit. Regarding the uncharged offense of rape of Jane Doe, number three, having occurred on November 10th, 1976, in the County of Sacramento, violation of Penal Code Section 261, do you admit or deny that? I admit. Regarding the uncharged offense of false imprisonment of Joan, Jane Doe, number 23, on November 10th, 1976, in the County of Sacramento, violation of Penal Code Section 236, do you admit or deny that? I admit. And regarding the uncharged offense of making a criminal threat to Jane Doe number 23 having occurred on November 10th, 1976, County of Sacramento violation of Penal Code Section 422, do you admit or de deny that? I admit. Counsel. In regards to incident 39, on the evening of December 18th, 1976, Jane Doe number 24 was home alone with a cold. Her parents had gone to a Christmas party and her sister was at a friend's house. The teenager decided to practice piano in their Ladera Way home in Fair Oaks in the county of Sacramento. As she played the piano, she heard some strange noises but didn't think anything of it. Moments later, she looked to her side and saw a man who immediately held a knife to her throat and told her, make a move and I'll kill you. It was Joseph D'Angelo that held the knife to her throat. D'Angelo asked when her parents would be returning so he would know how much time he had. She said she didn't know. D'Angelo told her to get up and said, get moving. If you say anything or flinch, I'll push the knife all the way in and I will be gone in the dark of night. D'Angelo then tied her hands behind her back with shoelaces that he had in his pocket and forced her outside into the backyard. Once in the backyard, D'Angelo forced her to take a seat on the picnic bench. He bound her legs, gagged, and blindfolded her. He walked back in and out of the house several times, and she could hear him opening cabinets and drawers. D'Angelo then asked her if she had ever fucked a man. She replied, no. D'Angelo took her hand and placed it on his penis. He forced her to masturbate him until he ejaculated. D'Angelo stood up, untied her leg bindings, pulled her jeans and underwear off. He cut her bra off with his knife and ripped her shirt off. He pushed her back on the picnic bench, binding her legs again. D'Angelo went back inside the house and returned several minutes later 
and forced her back inside the home to her parents' bedroom. He threw her onto the bed and vaginally raped her. Afterwards, he forced her outside again and then brought her into the family room where he raped her another time. D'Angelo went into the dining room and could be heard rummaging through a buffet cabinet. He returned to the family room, dragged her closer to the fireplace and raped her yet another time. Before climbing off of her, D'Angelo said, I've seen you at school before and you sure look good. After 10 minutes of silence, Jane Doe number 24 was able to get to the phone and call a neighbor for help. Later, her parents determined a lotion bottle, two gold rings, a necklace, a BB gun, and a photo were missing from their home. Council, you wish to be heard as incident number 39. There we are. Regarding the uncharged offense of rape of Jane Doe number 24, having occurred December 18, 1976 in the County of Sacramento, a violation of Penal Code Section 261, do you admit or deny that? I, I admit. Regarding the uncharged offense of false imprisonment of Jane Doe, number 24, having occurred on December 18th, 1976, in the County of Sacramento, violation of Penal Code Section 236, do you admit or deny that? I admit. And regarding the uncharged offense of making a criminal threat Jane Doe, number 24, having occurred December 18, 1976, in the County of Sacramento, Violation of Penal Code Section 422. Do you admit or deny that, sir? Uh, I admit. Council. In regards to incident number 40, on January 18, 1977, Jane Doe, number 25's husband, was out of town on business. At the time, they lived on Glenville Circle in the city and county of Sacramento. Jane Doe, number 24, was five months pregnant at this time. As she was falling asleep that evening, she sensed someone was in the room. She opened her eyes and saw a man, Joseph D'Angelo, standing in her bedroom, pointing a flashlight in her face. When Yvonne, asked, I'm sorry, when Jane Doe number 25 asked who it was, D'Angelo told her, be quiet and I won't hurt you. He told her to roll over and she tried to explain to him that because she was pregnant, she couldn't roll onto her stomach. He then pushed her onto her stomach and tied her wrists and ankles. When she was on her stomach, he put his knife to the right side of her neck and said, all I want is your money, just your money, and then I'll leave. If you don't tell me where it is, I'll slash you or just cut you up. She told him where he could find the money and he began rummaging through the house. When D'Angelo returned to the bedroom, he blindfolded her. She could hear a popping noise and asked D'Angelo what the noise was. He told her to guess. She then realized he was masturbating. D'Angelo straddled her back and tried to place his penis in her hands, but was not able to do so due to her positioning. He rolled her over, untied her legs, told her to put her legs around his neck as if he were her husband. D'Angelo then vaginally raped her and ejaculated inside her. D'Angelo left the room, continued to rummage through the home, broke a piggy bank and took loose change. He then returned to the bedroom, pulled her to the edge of the bed and forced her to orally copulate him. He pushed her back onto the bed and raped her a second time. When he was ready to leave, he asked for her car keys. She eventually heard the car start and leave. D'Angelo took coins, cash, a photograph of the victim and several pieces of jewelry from the home. Thank you, counsel. You wish to be heard as to incident 40. No, yeah. Regarding the uncharged offense of rape of Jane Doe, number 25, having occurred on January 18th, 1977, in the county of Sacramento, a violation of Penal Code Section 261, do you admit or deny that? Uh, I admit. Regarding the uncharged offense of false imprisonment of Jane Doe, number 25, having occurred on January 18th, 1977, in the County of Sacramento, a violation of Penal Code Section 236, do you admit or deny that? I admit. Regarding the uncharged offense of making a criminal threat to Jane Doe, number 25, having occurred on January 18, 1977, in the County of Sacramento, a violation of Penal Code Section 422, do you admit or deny that, sir? I admit. Counsel.
Mr. Ho. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Assistant Chief Tin Vu Ho from Sacramento County. Thank you. I have the factual basis for Incident 41. Can I proceed? Please. Jane Doe, number 26, lived alone in a single story house on Primrose Avenue in the city of Citrus Heights, County of Sacramento. On the evening of January the 23rd, 1977, the victim entertained some friends for dinner. Soon after midnight, everyone left the residence, leaving her home alone. After falling asleep, she was awakened at about 1.30 a.m. on January the 24th, 1977, by Joseph D'Angelo, who grabbed her by the arms. As she struggled to free herself, Jane Doe, number 26, felt something cold and sharp against her throat. The defendant told her, roll over on your stomach and put your hands behind your back. All I want is your money. He threatened her with an eight inch ice pick to describe her attacker as reeking from the smell of stale sweat. D'Angelo tied her hands behind her back with a clear cord and then wrapped a scarf around her eyes. After asking where her purse was located, he left the room and ransacked the house. When D'Angelo returned a few minutes later, the victim heard a popping sound, which she believed to be the defendant masturbating. He asked her, do you know what I'm doing? When she told D'Angelo that he was playing with his penis, he demanded that she call it quote unquote dick. Instead, forcing her to use that word, he forced her to play with it while her hands were tied behind her back. The victim knew she was about to. Joseph D'Angelo then rolled the victim over onto her stomach and inserted his penis into her vagina. He asked her, how long has it been since you've been fucked? D'Angelo forced the victim into multiple positions as he raped her over and over again. He was unable to achieve an orgasm. He then left her and walked into the kitchen where he ate food and drank beer. Over the next two hours, he repeatedly returned to rape the victim in different positions. The last time he left the room, the victim waited 15 minutes before crawling to the telephone to call the police for help. Thank you. Defense wish to be heard as to incident 41. No, Your Honor. Regarding the uncharged offense of rape of Jane Doe, number 26, having occurred on January 24th, 1977 in the County of Sacramento, violation of Penal Code Section 261, do you admit or deny that? I admit. Regarding the uncharged offense of false imprisonment of Jane Doe, number 26, having occurred January 24th, 1977 in the County of Sacramento, a violation of Penal Code Section 236, do you admit or deny that? I admit. Regarding the uncharged offense of making a criminal threat, Jane Doe, number 26, having occurred on January 24th, 1977 in the County of Sacramento, a violation of Penal Code Section 422. Do you admit or deny that, sir? I admit. Thank you, Counsel. Your Honor, regards to incidents 42 and 43, Jane Doe, number 27, lived with her husband and six-year-old daughter, Jane Doe, number 28, in a single-story home on Heathcliff Drive in the city of Carmichael County of Sacramento. When her husband left for work, at approximately 6.30 a.m. on February the 7th, 1977, Jane Doe, number 27, walked through the house to make sure all the doors were locked. About 10 minutes later, she felt someone else's presence in the house. She turned around and Joseph D'Angelo was standing there with a gun pointed right at her. He was wearing a ski mask and said, don't scream or I'll shoot you. I just want your money. D'Angelo forced her to sit at the kitchen table as he tied her hands behind her back with shoelaces that he brought with him. The defendant used granny knots, the same type of knots left at the scene of the majority murders. When D'Angelo led her into the bedroom, she knew he was about to be raped. He forced her to lay face down on the bed while he tied her ankles, placing a pillow over her head. D'Angelo sat on top of her with his hand cupped over her mouth he told her to shut up. He felt the gun and reached for it. As the two began struggling over the weapon, D'Angelo began to hit the victim several times and told her to stop fighting or he would hurt her daughter, 
saying, I'll go, and cut her ear off, and bring it back to you. Pressing his face against hers, he said, if you make one move, I'll kill you. He ran the cold, sharp blade of his knife across her cheek, telling her to shut up or he would slice her face open. D'Angelo would mostly talk through clenched teeth in a harsh whisper. He gagged and blindfolded her. After removing the victim's pants, D'Angelo pressed a knife against her stomach and orally copulated her as he ran the blade across her abdomen and leg. He then vaginally raped her, but suddenly he stopped after a few minutes. The victim was blindfolded, but he could sense that her six-year-old daughter was now in the room. D'Angelo forced the little girl onto the into the bathroom where he tied her up because she was crying. When the little girl continued to sob, D'Angelo placed her onto the bed next to her mother. D'Angelo left the room and could be heard ransacking through the house. After a few minutes, the victim worked the gag out of her mouth and asked her daughter if she was okay. This little girl warned her mother to be quiet because right at that moment, D'Angelo pushed his weight down on the bed to let them know that he was. They could hear his heavy breathing. When the little girl cried, the defendant held the knife to her throat and said, be quiet or else I'll cut you up. After the last time D'Angelo left the room and some time had passed, the little girl said, mommy, do you think he's gone? Even though she had lost all sense.